Hello, I'm Brian Allen. I'm the Information Security Manager at Washington University in St. Louis. And today we're going to talk about Zeek, Splunk, and an emergency mass notification tool called Alertus we've uh, got a clever use for. Uh, I want to start by just mentioning Keith uh, in his opening intro uh, today talked about there's a lot of interest in this virtual conference, but he wanted to try to keep capture those interactions that go on between presentations. And that reminded me of the first time that I learned about Bro back in 2013. I was at the Educause Security Conference and it was between a talk and I was talking with Seth Hall and he mentioned something about Bro. At the time, I think it was called the Bro IDS. And I said, nope, I don't have time for Bro. I'm, I've got an IDS already and I've got Snort and I just don't have time for another tool that's gonna generate a lot of false positives. And he says, well, take a look at it with me. I just wanna show it to you. So I said, sure, great. So we sat on a couch at the conference center and uh, as soon as he fired up his laptop and showed me those logs, I could tell this was immediately useful and uh, uh, really cool. So that's, that's how I was introduced to it. And I ended up skipping that next talk. We talked for that hour and he showed me all the different ways that uh, you can use Bro. So nowadays at Washington University, we've got uh, a cluster with uh, one manager and five workers, hundred cores where we, and just in, 2019, we uh, added a bunch of taps and some load balancers, and now we monitor not just north-south, we also monitor east-west traffic. And that's how I learned about this these alertus logs, because I could see all the traffic on campus I couldn't see before. So I highly recommend uh, getting some east-west traffic in there if you can. Um, let's see what else. So today's topics, that's what we're going to talk about. And... Um, so what if you don't use Alertus? That's my question. Uh, is this talk useful? So I would argue that even if you don't use Alertus, really the theme of this talk is know your logs. That's, that's what we're talking about here. In this case, I uh, happen to be Alertus. And what I like to do is, uh, you know, I've been, at, uh, I've been in IT for almost 21 years. I've been at WashU almost 15 years. And when I first started at WashU, I was an analyst. And, and I did something, they call it, it's hunting now. I didn't know it was called hunting then. But you don't have to just always hunt. Sometimes I just like to browse. I like to just explore the logs uh, and just poke around and see what's there. Zeke has so many log files with so many columns. You never know which column is going to be important in a future incident. So I just sort of browse around and take a look at things. And uh, it's, where is all the useful data? So these, this is some of the useful data that I like to look for in log files. Uh, these top seven um, IP address, usernames, hashes, file names, DNS domains or URLs, uh, machine names and Windows domains. Most of the log files have, you know, at least two, usually IP address and something else like a file name or a DNS name. But the alertus logs have four. They check off four of these different uh, um, uh, types of information. So that's a, that's a pretty, good, uh, pretty good log file. If you can get four of these in one log, it's pretty good. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Wash UIT here. Uh, and that's helpful because um, uh, well, so WashU was a, a, a decentralized campus, uh, decentralized IT campus, and uh, every school has their own IT department, uh, historically. Uh, so that means they have their own staff, their own servers, uh, software, desktops. Each IT department ran their own show. So uh, about four or five years ago, this started to change, and we started to become more consolidated into a group called WashU IT. But there's still a lot of groups that are not in Washu IT, a lot of departments that are outside Washu IT. So if, if, if a machine's in Washu IT and we need to track it down because of an incident, it's usually pretty easy to track it down. I've got all those logs, they all go up to our SIM. But if we wanna track down a machine that's outside of Washu IT, we can still do it. I mean, we can track down any machine on campus, um, but sometimes it can be harder if it's, not in, if it's outside in some smaller department where maybe the logs aren't perfect. Um, so this, this Alertus uh, uh, traffic can help us uh, really speed up a search if we want to find a machine. And the idea that, that really is underneath all this is um, in, uh, in 2011, WashU started using Alertus. This is when universities started using these mass notification tools. This was after Virginia Tech and some other shootings. And um, the chancellor said, everybody at WashU has to use Alertus. That's just going to be our mass notification tool. So that's an important piece under this is, is all the machines on campus need to be running Alertus 
even if you're not in Marshall IT. So that's a, that's a handy thing that we can tap into with, with, uh, with Zcure. So I mentioned what Alertus is. Here's the way it, it can communicate out. Uh, they've got these beacons here. And uh, a lot of the traffic is generated by these uh, Alertus desktop clients that are pushed on everybody's machines. Uh, there's digital signs up here um, in the hallways, the cable TV override. There's lots of speakers outside. This is great for you know tornadoes and get, get the information out if tornadoes on the way or some other emergency. So here's how it works uh, at a very high level. So we have a desktop here uh, in the lab, let's say. All the lab machines have this installed. And it phones home. You got a message for me? Nope. You got a message for me? Nope. And then the police department, there's some emergency, so they'll post a message. So they post a message to the server, and now the desktop logs in. Do you have a message for me? Oh, you do. And what do you know? That all the screens in the lab light up with this emergency message. So that's the way it, it works. It phones home. And so let's take a look at some of this traffic. How does it phone home, and what is it sending back and forth? So you might recognize this, this traffic here. This is a HTTP log in Zeek. And, um, it's not only HTTP, it's port 80. So this is clear text traffic so that we can see everything that's going back and forth on campus. And the information that's interesting here I see is in the URI uh, column. So let's take a look and let's blow up the URI piece of information here. So this is the URI and we pulled out each piece of information that uh, Alerta sends along in each connection. And let's see, uh, the, the, the pieces of information that are most useful are, are the IP address of the client and Usually this matches the, you know, the ID uh, ridge.h uh, um, in Zeek, uh, but it does it might not. Maybe there's a, a NAT and you're, you're behind a NAT. Now you can know the original IP address of the client. It also includes the Windows domain and uh, the username, which is extremely useful in this case. And the machine name can also be very useful. And uh, what else do we have? So how often does this thing phone home? It's not gonna be very useful the phone's home every hour because then you know the tornado's already hit you. So I asked our Alertus, you know, administrator, um, you know, talk to me about Alertus and tell me more about it. He he thought that the phone home about every ninety seconds, but in our Zeek logs, it looks to me like many many of these are phoning home about every twenty seconds, between twenty and sixty seconds. So uh, in the last day, I counted about 13,000, 14,000 unique Alertus clients on the network. So that is a lot of connections. It was really filling up our HTTP log. So how much traffic is it? Um, th these packets are small. They're not, they don't carry a ton of data, but um, for the uh, for the Alertus traffic, there were uh, almost 2 million lines in the last um, hour. And then uh, HTTP log had just, a, just almost 3 million lines. So that works out to almost 40% of HTTP traffic is Alertus traffic. And there was just too much in the HTTP log, uh, you know, we had to do other work with the HTTP log. So I, we wanted to break this out into its own separate log file. It made sense to do that. And if I had uh, Ashish's class yesterday, we probably could have done this, but I didn't have it. Uh, so when we wanted to turn this on, you know, some months ago, uh, we just used the uh, the old bro and Zeek mailing list. And there were some, uh, there's some emails that went back and forth about people messing with log files. So we were able to take those and um, figure out how to do this on our own. This is this script that we uh, used to do that. So I had a student worker do this for me. She's a computer science major, very sharp. And uh, this is the 16 lines of logs. Eight of them are just uh, comments or uh, empty brackets. So you don't, need, uh, you don't need many lines to take. This is basically a grep minus V. We're going to grep out the lines we want and put them in its own log file. We don't want to duplicate the lines. We want to make sure they're, uh, it's a separate log file. So this is a script that I think this presentation will be uploaded at some point. You need this uh, type of uh, code later and you can have it. Let's see. Uh, so, so we got two examples So uh, that we've used this that I thought were interesting. So let's talk about the first example. Um, we had a, a department on campus that really wanted to find all the old Windows 7 machines. And um, it, it's not obvious where they all are. This is a big campus. Uh, we're spread out geographically. Uh, there's many different networks. Um, we, have a, we can track every machine down. If we have an IP address, we can, we can track them all down. But uh, we were looking for an easier way to track down all these machines. 
So we have a tool on campus, it's a scanner, it's a tool called Rumble. Um, if you've ever used Nmap with OS detection turned on, it's, it's kind of like that, only way better. Um, so there's a little, I should have put Rumble maybe in the headline of the title, but uh, we, we run a, a campus-wide scan with this Rumble tool and we determine lots of information about what it scans. So operating system, what services are running, you know, what type of vendor the, the tool is. And so then we pulled out all the Windows 7 machines from that scan. So we have a list, a spreadsheet or a CSV file with all the Windows 7 machines. So we upload that to Splunk. That's where Splunk comes into this talk. And uh, we've got all this alertist data in the, in the, in the Zeek log. So we've got Zeek log, we've got, we've got scan data. Let's put those together and see if we can uh, match up the usernames from uh, the alertus log and the Windows 7 information from the uh, scan data. They, they both share an IP address. So this is the, uh, the, the Splunk query that we wrote uh, to do that. And that's my analyst, Andrew wrote this, probably wrote 95% of the script here. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a whiz with uh, wizard with um, uh, Splunk. We, so uh, we, we were looking for uh, Sims for a long time. The three main Sims I know about are uh, you know, Splunk and then uh, Elk is, is popular. And then uh, Humio is also a really good one. Uh, so this will work for any of those uh, sims if you have a search uh, search tool like that. So the, I'm not going to go through every single character, but the, the idea here is we're going to look in Zeek logs in the alertus traffic. We just want the lines that have this string in it. This is get active message. That's where all the good data is in the, in the uh, alertus logs. And then we'll split it out with the split function. We're going to look for the IP, machine name, username, and domain name. And then the lookup command is where it checks the alertus data with the CSV file and it outputs uh, the information we want. Uh, and then we just search for Windows 7 only and then we make a nice little table of it, download that and send it off to our desktop team and they can go talk to the owners and say, hey, you, you know, Jane Doe, you're, you have a Windows 7 machine, you need to bring it in. Um, we need to get it updated or retired or whatever they need to do to it. And then these last few lines are just, so you can't see the username. So this is what it looks like when, I, when you run this. So this is the output. So there's all the usernames. Uh, these are the domains, the Windows domains. Uh, machine names are handy because there's a, a lot of camp, a lot of departments on campus have a specific format for their machine names, and that helps them track things down. These are you know some uh, internal IP addresses in the Windows 7 OS. So that's one example uh, that we were able to use it. And uh, one other example is we had a weird case where we had a, an, an employee died. And her uh, family came to St. Louis, and uh, I guess they were um, getting her things from her uh, house or apartment, and uh, they ended up taking the laptop back with them back to where they lived. Well, it wasn't her personal laptop. It was actually a WashU owned laptop. And the, there were some questions that were asked after this. One is, you know, which laptop do they take? There was some question as to maybe she had multiple laptops. And they weren't sure which one these this family members took back. And the que second question was, was this laptop encrypted? So they thought they had, they, they thought they knew which laptop it was, but they weren't totally sure. So with using this alertist Zeke idea, you know, I looked for her username in the alertist logs and about a month or so, two months ago, whenever, uh, I could see her username in the alertist logs, you know, her machine was checking in every 20 seconds. And so that gave us the, the machine name and the IP address where it was located on the campus. So that meant we knew which machine exactly was missing now that the family had taken back with them and then they, they checked the records and uh, actually wasn't encrypted. So that was uh, an oversight in that, that little process. Um, so we ended up getting a courier and they sent the courier down and we got the laptop back. And that's, those are my two, uh, two examples. I think I'm good on time. Um, talked a little fast, so I got a few extra minutes. Um, this is part where I would take questions, but I guess we'll just do questions later. You can find me on, uh, on the chat. And uh, let me know later if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.